Welcome. This is Mr. Fisher, and this is Mr. Fisher Flips third grade math. We'll be using math expressions today, lesson 4-17, which is working with solving word problems. And our focus today will be solving those word problems that involve two or more steps. Assess reasonableness. That means we're going to look at those problems and see if they, they're correct. Let's get started today. We need to figure out how we can put these four individuals, Avery, Isabella, Tanisha, and Sophia, and put them in line. But how many ways can we put them in line? She's going to be Avery. Avery is going to be in line, and we need to see, well, let's, let's make four of her at least, and we'll see how many times we change the line order based on having Avery always first. So we could put Isabella, Tanisha, and Sophia in that order. There's one way. Let's try it another way. Let's stay with Isabella being second, but let's put Sophia next. Tanisha last. There's another way. Let's try it with, we already did it with Isabella. Let's try it with Tanisha. See if we can do that with Isabella, Sophia. We can do it that way. Change it around so Isabella goes last and Sophia goes second to last. Oh, looks like we need some more. Maybe we'll get five or six out of these. Avery's still first, but let's put Sophia next. Sophia, let's put Tanisha, and then, of course, Isabella. And then we can put Isabella next and Tanisha. Is there any others we can do? Let's count how many we did. We have one row, two rows, three rows, four rows, five rows, six rows. So the answer is there are six different ways that they can stand in line if Avery is always first. And that's the right way answer, six ways. Good job. Let's move on, and I want you you guys to be practicing. We're having a hard time doing the top part of our power-ups every morning. That's because they're getting a lot harder, aren't they? The parts that you guys are having trouble with are making sure that you recognize some of these problems, like six times seven. Seeing that instantly and knowing that it's 42, it takes a little bit, and I understand that. But that's why you have your multiplication table out. And so you know 11 times 11 because you've looked it up in the dictionary so many times. Well, 110, well, you should be looking those up, especially the 11s and 12s. So what I'm saying is when you get home, I want you to practice more. Practice for five minutes with your multiplication tables. See if you can get all the sixes. Say, mom, I need to practice my sixes. Well, let's look at today's lesson and we're going to look at how to do this. This is this looks like a multiplication table, but if you look up here in the corner, it's an addition table. And so by looking at this addition table, I have a couple questions for you. First question, when you add two even numbers, will the sum be odd or even? So let's try that. Let's go an even number, four, plus let's make it another even number. Let's make it six. Four plus six is 10. Let's check your answer. Every time it's four plus an even number, is it always going to be even? Well, what would happen if we add two odd numbers? Say 1 plus 5. What's going to be the answer? Odd or even? It says it's even right there. Let's try 1 plus 9. <sighs> 10? Are you saying any two odd numbers are always going to be an even number in the answer? Let's check. 3 plus 9? Huh, it's even. How about 7? It's even too. 7 plus 9 is 16. So if you add two even numbers, the answer is going to be even. If you add two odd numbers, it's going to be even. How do you know when the sum of two numbers will be odd? How is it, How are we going to get 15? Let's check our answer. 15 and let's get 6 plus 9. 6 plus 9 is 15. What do we do? We add in an even number plus an odd number. Let's switch it around. Let's make an odd number plus an even number. It's also odd to see if an answer is reasonable. Well, we have this problem, 28 plus 37, and we want to know if it's reasonable. And if we make a reasonable answer, are we going to get this answer 56? Let's round it. 28, is it closer to 20 or 30? 30. Is 37 closer to 30 or 40? It's closer to 40, so we're going to add 40. What's 30 plus 40? It equals 70. Wait a second. Is that a reasonable answer? 56? 56 and 70 aren't matching up. So let's see if what the answer should be. 
8 plus 7. 8 plus 7 is 15. Carry the 1. 2 plus 3 is 5. Plus 1 is 6. 65 was the accurate answer. We see that 70 is closer to 65 than 56 is. So a better answer would have been in the 60s. Let's practice a couple problems. Go ahead and stop the video and see if you can do this on your own. Use rounding to decide if this answer is reasonable. Write yes or no, then find the answer to see if you're correct. Let's look at this. There were 432 people. Let's round to the nearest 10, and let's say 430. And 257 people sat on the home team side, which meant there were 175 people on the other side. So let's take 257. We're going to look at that 5. Is it going to go up or down? Because that 7 is closer to the next 10, we're going to make that 260. So if we take 430 minus 260, we're going to find out an approximation, which is a rounded number. So 0 minus 0 is 0. We can't take 6 away from 3, so we're going to borrow from the 400, and we're going to make that 300 now. And we regroup and make that 130 minus 60 is 70, and 3 minus 2 is 1. So 170, is that close to 175? I say it's a reasonable answer. What do you say? Let's check our answer and see how we did. Yes, it is a reasonable answer. There are 175 people that sat on the visiting team side. Well, let's go on to the next problem. Stop this video and see if you can do this one on your own. Let's see if this is also reasonable. We're going to find the answer to the Pecos River being 826 miles long. We're going to see if that's correct. So let's, instead of doing it by the tens, let's look at the hundreds. Okay, so we're going to round to the nearest 100. 234 miles. If we look at that 3, 30, we're going to say 200. Okay, 200. Pecos River is 234 miles longer than the Yellowstone River. How long is the Yellowstone River? 692 miles long. So let's round that. Which 100 is it closest to, 600 or 700? I say 700. Is that what you said? Okay, if we add those two together, it should be around 900. So if we look, is 826 miles about 900? No, it's almost off, 75. So is that a reasonable answer? Well, let's check our answer and see what the book says. No, it is not. A closer answer would be 926 miles. So if we actually added 234 plus 692, it should be 926 miles. So 900 is a lot closer than 800. There's three properties of addition that I want to show you, share with you today. And the first one I want to share with you is the commutative property of addition, which states that addition can be done in any order. 5 plus 2 plus 8 is the exact same thing as 2 plus 8 plus 5. And all we did was rearrange it. So that's the commutative property. Here is the associative property, which states that grouping the add-ins in different ways does not change the sum. When you do adding, if you group them, 7 plus 3 plus 6 is the same as 7 plus 3 plus 6. And so that is called the associative property. And the last property of addition is called the identity property of addition. And what it says is any number, when you add a 0 to that number, is going to be what? The sum is going to be that same number. So 45 plus 0 equals 45. And 0 plus 8 is going to equal 8. So it's identifying itself as the number that it's used with a 0. So those are the three properties of addition. And we will be practicing those and making sure you understand how to use them. Here's your homework for tonight. Go through this really close. There's couple problems here. Maya had a dozen white eggs. Jake's family went on vacation. Adding up three numbers at a pet store. Dogs, cats, and other pets. Some birds. And then you have reading groups. And then this one. Remember how we did reasonable answers? Remember how to round? 405 bottles of water on Saturday would be closest to 400 bottles and bagels. The other part of your homework will be the remembering part and there's actually five problems here. You actually have to write the first step question and the answer then solve the problem. The last three questions Mr. Frankel buys eight containers of laundry detergent and each container has six liters of detergent. How many liters of detergent does Mr. Franco buy? Are you going to use adding or subtracting or multiplying? Write and solve an addition word problem that has the numbers 495 and 247. Jada has a collection of stickers, horse stickers, bear stickers, and cat stickers. See if you can figure that one out. Well, make sure you do a WSQ today. When and where did you watch the video? Sum up what you saw. What did you learn from this lesson? What was the main idea? And write one question you might have from watching the video. 
that's our lesson for today. Make sure you practice your multiplication times because that's where you're going to get the best learning opportunities. Good night.